You're listening to Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Wellness Tuesday. No alliteration there. No, we need to, it's Wellness Wednesday, but t- that's Today tomorrow. Today is Tuesday. I know. <laughs> Days are hard. <laughs> thankfully, no one ever listens to us to figure out what day of the week it is. Yeah, that, that would be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us today to continue our wellness series, Deaconess Heidi Gaiman of uh, ilovemysheppard.com. Thank you so much, Heidi, for spending some time with us today. Hey, thanks for having me. Always a good time. Do you have any alliteration to help us describe this Tuesday? <laughs> we, I can't think of anything for... I, I can't. I can only think of things that are not good, like tempting Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know, can I tempt you to good health? Like, I'm not sure that works. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. <laughs> nope, doesn't That's work. Funny. Okay, so let's our, bypass that. Our topic for today, uh, when ministry needs a, a resurrection, uh, that's your latest video, or one of your newer videos um, on YouTube as well, helping uh, church work families, uh, ministry families, um, stay healthy and uh, well-rounded. So let's let's dig in. You ready? Yeah, I'm totally ready. You know, this one's actually one of my favorites because anytime we get to talk about the resurrection is a good Mm -hmm. time. You know, you're like, and so I wrote this one actually last spring when we did a study at ilovemyshepherd.com called My Redeemer Lives. And we worked through Mm -hmm. all the resurrections in scripture. You know, we obviously worked like very closely with the gospels, but then all those different resurrections that God shows us um, throughout scripture, including the Old Testament. So it's kind of cool. And I feel like ministry is kind of like that. Like we are so familiar with the resurrection that we're not looking for where God is working resurrection, you know, today in our life. And so it was kind of fun to sit down and just think about this concept of resurrection and what that means. Like if we have a God who died for us to take away our sins and then rose on Easter morning, what does that look like in my daily life? Um, Particularly when it doesn't feel very Easter (laughs) morning-y, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And and particularly when our vocations uh, were given to serve others and we spend so much time focusing on others and serving others, why is it so easy to overlook that, um, that, that power of the Word of God or the work of the Word of God in our own lives? Yeah, I think what resurrection brings into something is, you know, newness and joy. Those are the two words that really come to mind. Um, And so I think so often when you're working in church work, you're dealing with um, struggle, pain, suffering, loss, you know, and, and yes, of course we have joy. I mean, I get to like do chapel at our Lutheran school tomorrow. Like there's a lot of joy in that. Um, But so much of the daily work is kind of grind, you know, like putting out another sermon or um, writing something different and um, that that we do every week, I guess. And so it kind of gets monotonous to some degree, which I'm sorry if I'm busting anyone's church work bubble here. <laughs> like, I always feel like it's so hard because, you know, we have so many people listening that are members and that's awesome. And your church worker loves their work, um, but just like any of us feel about our vocation, sometimes it's monotonous and sometimes it's disappointing and sometimes it's awesome. And the same is true for church work. And so I think, you know, in that suffering, pain, loss, mourning, and all of that work with parishioners, with people at schools or institutions or whatever, um, you know, at schools even, like kids acting up, like that doesn't feel very resurrection-y. Um, and so it can be easily, you know, feel kind of like stuck at the cross instead of having God bring that resurrection morning into it, I guess. Yeah, I think we forget, I mean, I'm not I'm not an actual like church worker in the church, but I think we we can forget that uh, church workers that it's still work. So it's it's not it's not always the the pleasant rainbows and, and bubbles that we might project on <laughs> on people who are like, oh hey, they get to work in the church all week. That's really cool, but that's not one always. day a week, right? Yeah, one day a week. <laughs> right. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but- right, and just. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sarah. No, I go ahead. Say, just like any vocation, I, I'm gonna. I am. I'm gonna go ahead, right? No, <laughs> just like any vocation where you don't necessarily see like productive results immediately. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
How many vocations do you actually see productive results immediately? I think that's a faux pas that we've created in our like American dream society. Like that's just not a thing. God works slowly and over time. And um, that is often true in every vocation. But in church work, I think, um, you know, there you live knowing that you may never see a result. Mm-hmm. And, and that's okay. That's part of putting it into God's hands as his work through us instead of, you know, look at me and all these amazing things I'm doing. So exactly. Yeah. You were, you were talking about suffering uh, before I got you on that tangent. Um, (laughs) How is, uh, how is suffering uh, an important part of our life together? Yeah. I, my, one of my favorite passages in scripture talks about the work of the church and, and it's just this little tiny verse after Paul talks about, oh, you know, there's lots of members and there's tendons and joints and all that stuff. And then he says, you know, that we suffer and rejoice together. And I don't think you can do away with either of those pieces, but I think in the church, we, we've actually landed in a spot at times where we don't do either. Mm-hmm. Like we just kind of show up and, um, we're not like suffering alongside each other. That's the benefit of ministry life, honestly, is like we get to live in that all the time where we're suffering and rejoicing with people in very real ways. Um, And so I think that that you get to see the work of the cross and the resurrection in both those moments all the time. And it's just an amazing thing. Um, and I'd like to see that for all of our members too. You know, I'd love to see us sitting beside each other. And, and we do do that, but I think it's a place of the church, of community that maybe we have, you know, forgotten or set aside a little bit since community is such a difficult thing in our society. Like it's just not something we do. We we live in a very individualistic society yeah. today, and mm-hmm. uh, I don't think community and, and and life together is anywhere near the the forefront of our minds. Mm-hmm. Y- you mentioned yeah. um, well, well. Speaking of life together, in the video you mentioned play. Uh, mm-hmm. Why do we and, and and joy as well? You mentioned that just a little bit ago. Why do we feel inhibited to play or find joy in our vocations? You know, one of my favorite things to do is to read the Bible with my youth in particular and to find the parts where Jesus is kind of funny or, (laughs) I mean, even a little bit. I don't think we can put like sarcasm into Jesus' tone, but at the same time, he doesn't respond in the way you expect. Um, And so I... God is not devoid of of laughter and of silliness, honestly. Um, Now, honestly, or God is perfect. (laughs) You know, let's put that on the table for a second. And God is really perfect. And so his version of this might be different than I think the way you and I would put it together. And But let's sit for a minute with God's character. Like he has humor in his character because we have humor in our character. You know, we otherwise we wouldn't have it. And um, I just think that it's such a part of the resurrected life that we can have humor because we have hope. And so with hope, we can move forward and we can laugh in the face of grief. You know, when it says, oh, death, where is your your sting? You know, oh, grave, you know, we have victory. Um, we can enter into a place where we aren't weighed down by sin and shame and and death's power. Instead, you know, God invites us to play in his presence, to enjoy his creation, you know, to go for a a run, a jog in nature, a hike in nature and and be in awe of him and to play with our children and and to um, make up silly songs together. Mm -hmm. Um, And to, you know, my husband like always talks about in ministry, how he'd like to just go out to recess with the kids (laughs) each day and play with them, you know, as a pastor and how much the kids love that, you know? And I think that those places where we can find play help us remember the hope that we live in, that we don't live in the cross and suffering all the time, that we have the joy of the resurrection every moment available also. Yeah, I think that's a hard thing for, I don't know, maybe it's a Lutheran thing, um, to, to have emotions. Yeah, nope. <laughs> True story. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, mean, we're talking about a lot of feelings. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's it's uh, like you feel guilty about being happy about stuff because you're supposed to feel, um, you know, sad because of all the sinful things that are going on. But but that's mm-hmm. that's totally not Especially not during Lent. 
Right. Oh, I know. I was just going to say, like, leave it to Deaconess Heidi Gaiman to be like, let's talk about joy during Lent. You know, I feel like that's kind of my my place in life or something. But at the same time, you know, we we have Easter every Sunday, you know, right. even in Lent. And and I know that we like to put away the alleluias and stuff. But especially when someone's grieving, especially when they're suffering in our midst, let us not take that resurrection from them. You know, Lent has its place. It's meant to be a tool. Um, but just like um, tools can be unuseful, I guess, <laughs> you know, like you can't use a pair of pliers to fix something that needs a screwdriver. You know what I mean? It's the same way. Like you, we have the resurrection and the cross. Both of those things fit together. You cannot have one without the other, this mm-hmm. side of the resurrection. Yeah. Ordering our days yeah. for a purpose. Yeah. Deaconess Heidi Gaiman, I love my shepherd.com. Thank you so much for being our guest today and uh, helping us with this wellness topic. Thanks. See you next time. That does it for the Coffee Hour today. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Goldseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.